Reverse ETL has become a vital part of the modern data stack, but sometimes I think it can be hard to truly understand what it is without seeing it in action. Reverse ETL is a process of connecting your single source of truth, such as a data warehouse typically with other business applications directly. But today I want to show you how to actually get started with this process by using a tool called Census. And Census is one of the leading reverse ETL platforms out there. And it's designed to be something you can simply plug into your existing architecture and get going. So today we'll go through how to get started with Census with a free trial. We'll take a look at the interface of the tool and then finally actually sync some data out of our Snowflake database into another application. You can kind of see where this fits in again in the main big picture of a workflow. It sits on top of your existing warehouse and syncs to all of these tools. And here are all of the different apps that they use. And we can see all of them. There's quite a few. Common example could be, let's say, MailChimp. Maybe you want to sync information to your uh, mailing email provider or to Mixpanel, maybe another database. Salesforce, obviously, is a common one. So tons of stuff here that you can do. So let's get started. We're going to go up here. Let's go back to the main page and just do try for free. If you have an account, you can log in. Obviously, we don't. So I'll do sign up. And I'm going to put in an email and sign up. Now I'll go to my inbox and see what we got. So I just went and clicked in my email. It was a confirmation button. So I went ahead and clicked that and it sent me to this page. So now let's go through and try this again. And here we are. Welcome to Census. We're happy to have you. And we're just going to continue. Obviously, we have this quick start landing page and it'll help you set up a source and a destination. Again, we're syncing from wherever your data is managed to some sort of tool and it, it can guide you through that. Let's go through the left here and syncs are kind of what it sounds like. This is where you're actually syncing your data. So once we create a connection, let's say Snowflake to Google Sheets, that together is a sync and you can have multiple syncs between, uh, you know, your single data source and different connections. Next, we have models. And as it says here, models run on top of your data warehouse. You can create shared definitions of that data. And it's essentially in place of just doing a plain full copy or sync from your source to the destination. Instead, you can create some customized views uh, essentially on top of that and sync those instead. Segments are kind of like a filter or a, a custom subset of a model. And then we have connections here. Uh, we'll have to create a data source, which in our case will be Snowflake, but this would be your primary source of data, your data warehouse typically, and then service connection. So this will be Salesforce or MailChimp or any of those other ones that we said where they're more business applications. Where are you sending it? Then we have settings. This is just going to be typical administrative stuff. If you have a Slack channel you want to connect with, you can put this here, change your time zone, add team members, take a look at your billing, uh, API integrations, all this stuff uh, in particular with DBT Cloud, which is cool. We'll talk about that maybe in another video. And then finally at the bottom, we have census docs, which will take you to their documentation so you can see how to do different things with depending on your data source, you know, how to use models, segments, it kind of breaks everything down here for you. All right, so now that we've set that up, let's create a source and a destination and, and try to sync some data here. All right, so in this demo, what we're going to do is for the source, it will be my Snowflake data warehouse. It's one table and one record. It's just for demo. And the destination is we're going to sync that data to Salesforce. I think that's a really common example. So we'll use this. And so what we're going to do is sync this account information from Snowflake to Salesforce. So I have the NBA National Basketball Association account here, and we're just going to populate some records, but pull it from the data warehouse to see how this can work. All right, so let's go through the steps first of adding a source. We need to add that data warehouse. So in our case, you know, we can see there's a bunch from here, but we'll use Snowflake. And before we can get going here, there's a few things we need to do to get it set up. And this is similar to a lot of tools like this. I know Fivetran has something similar, but we need to follow some basic setup instructions first. So essentially what we need to do is we need to run this script here. It's nice to give it all written out for us. We'll need to change a few uh, items in it, but let's go ahead and copy this. And I'm going to paste this now directly into my Snowflake environment. And ultimately what this is doing is it's going to create a role just for census. It's going to give it its own warehouse to use extra small auto suspending. So it doesn't, you know, behind the scenes, rack up costs. We're going to create a role. Like we said, 
And then it's also going to create a census database and schema. And the point of this is to have a place for census to store its logs and kind of keep track of the state of your warehouse and understand what it needs to update. And as we get down here, if we look at this bottom part, uh, this is one of the areas where we're going to need to change. And this is going to give census, this new role that we make, access to a specific database, a specific schema, where you want this data to be pulled from, because without doing this, it has no permissions. So in our case, what we will do is we're just going to give permissions to this warehouse schema in analytics. So I'll populate this with analytics and each of these will get analytics.warehouse to uh, go for this. So I'll go ahead and do that real quick. Now that's done, I've updated each of these with the database and schema that we'll be using. And the final thing we need to adjust here before we can run this is to give a password to this new user. So it's also creating a census user that will be assigned to the role, etc. But we need to give it a password. So for the sake of this, I'll just keep a very simple password. But obviously in a production environment, you want this to be way more secure and locked down. All right, so that should have everything filled out for us here and we should be ready to run all of this. So I'm going to select all queries and let's run them. Let's see if we get through this. So you do need specific account level permissions to uh, create some of these objects. And so what I'm going to do is switch to account admin. So again, you'll probably need to ask somebody to help you with this if you don't have permission to account admin, but let's go ahead and, and run these now. All right, and we're all set. I'm going to refresh this to make sure it all populates. Let's go to roles. So here we can see census role was created. And if we select census role, it should only have access to that limited information, right? So it has just accounts and the census, new census database we created. And the only warehouse it has is the census warehouse. And again, these are the default databases and we are all set. So now our Snowflake environment is properly set up. So now we can go back to the quick start and complete that setup part. All right, so now we need to get the uh, account name without the HTTPS in there. Grab this here, paste it in. Query execution warehouse, in my case, census warehouse, again, because that's what we created uh, over here. And the user is going to be census. Authentication, you could do key pair if you have that. I would recommend that for a production environment. But for our sake, we're just gonna do the password, which is, that simple one that we created uh, right here. Now let's go and connect. And here it's just reminding you again to create this database and schema if you haven't already, which we've already done as that was part of the other query. So we're good to go, let's confirm. And now it's going to run a test connection and make sure we're all good here. So I'll pause this while it finishes this up. All right, so all the test connection steps pass. So let's go ahead and finish. So now our source is all set. We can see the Snowflake environment is set up here. Next, we wanna add the destination, which again, could be all sorts of different things. You can see the options here. Some are in beta, some are fully ready to go. In our case, we're going to do Salesforce because that's one of the more common use cases of this. It's one of the most popular CRMs. And there's some pretty nice behind the scenes integrations with Salesforce. So I'm going to click connect and it's going to automatically link to Salesforce because I'm already logged in on my browsers. If you're already connected to Salesforce, this is going to be really easy. Literally, that was it. So let's click finish. And you can see it's already uh, in the census demo Salesforce. That's the environment I'm using. Um, so if we go to uh, connections here, we can see them both broken down here. We can come in and edit them as much as we need if something changes. And with Salesforce here, you know, we can come in and uh, see this information here and how it was connected. Uh, the URL, the username we use, et cetera. So if that's not set up, it would prompt you to go through that API and connect that for you. So now that we have these connections, let's move on to creating our first sync. And there's two different ways that we can go about doing this. We can go straight to syncs and add a sync and we'll essentially connect a from our Snowflake environment and pull directly from the warehouse table. And what that means is it's gonna look at your entire table and just pull directly from it, a direct query to that. And that's completely acceptable, you can do that. But the other option is to use uh, what's called a model. And I think models are a really important part of census. So I wanna show that as an example here as well. So if we go to models, just click out of this, there's different ways we can do this. We'll touch on uh, DBT and, and some of these other ones in later videos. But for now, what we're gonna do is create our first model and use this 
to sync our data. So let's go ahead and create a model. Up at the top here, we can see it's pulling from our source and we'll give it a name. I'll just call this demo SF sync. And here it's just a simple SQL query. You can make this as complex or as simple as you want. In my case, I already have something pre-built, but what's important here is to remember you, that your user, your census user has permissions to this object. And I'm just trimming down the number of columns that I'm selecting because let's say, for example, your table is massive. You don't really care about all of them. This is something you can do, or you want to add some more joins or something custom in here. Uh, you can do that as well. Now we can go ahead and preview this. And here we could see it pulled that information here for us. And we'll go ahead and save this model. But again, remember models are really important in census. It allows you to add a little bit extra customization, rename things, uh, whatever you need on top of your existing warehouse. So now that we have that model saved, let's go back to syncs and go through this process again. And now you'll see the difference. Now, again, we have our connection from our Snowflake, but instead of only having the option to pull from the warehouse table directly, we have the option to pull from the sync, which is kind of another layer on top of that. So let's select this. Where do we want the sync data to go? Salesforce. And because census is already integrated with Salesforce, it has all these different objects that you can pick from. In our case, we're going to do account. And now how do we want to update it? There's different options for this. We're going to just update and create. I only have one record in this table anyway. And how will they be matched? Okay, so here is where we have to tell census how to figure out which record it's supposed to update. And you can think of this almost like a join in SQL where it needs to figure out the different IDs to make sure that it's joining correctly. So in our case here, this is pulling from our model. We're going to say company domain should match domain. These should be things obviously that are unique to a specific record. Next, which property should be updated? This is where we actually pick what is going to be adjusted through census. So we have account name. This is a required field. It's going to look for these different items that we have here. And in your case, you may have custom fields, and this is where you can use your custom logic and push it to a custom field in Salesforce and get really creative with how you move this along, but make sure that everyone's using the same underlying uh, logic. So let's add a few more mappings here. We can pick different Salesforce items. We'll do company ID and it automatically recognized what this is. Action count, again, it's rec recognizing it because I named the columns uh, very close to it. Number of orders, number of orders, number of events. And I'll also mention here that if you need to add a constant value, maybe something always gets set to the same value, you can just hard code in here and it will be automatically populated as the constant value. Now we can run a test to make sure that it works. But for now, let's just go to next. And here we can see there's just one record in my source table. There's 194 records in account, but it's only going to match where the domains equal each other, which in my case is mba.com. I know that's just for this account here. So we would only expect this record to be updated. And the next sync will automatically be a full sync. We'll go ahead and run this now and create the sync. And now within here, we can see it's going to give us different logs, real time status, the different configuration. We can see it's currently set to a manual schedule. There's no logging. Again, these are all things that you can adjust. And if you wanted to make this sync on a schedule, which would be a very common scenario, you can go right in here, click edit and adjust whatever you want. You know, there's different options here depending on your needs. And here's an overview of the mappings. So I'll pause this now while it goes through and syncs that data for us. All right, so now up to date, let's go to sync history and status completed, one record updated. And obviously in a real scenario, you probably have way more records than this, but again, just a demo. Now let's go back to our Salesforce instance and I have not refreshed this. So let's go ahead and refresh. And boom, there it is. We have all these values here were synced from census from our data warehouse. And you can just imagine now if you take this to other levels and you have more complicated logic or you want to sync to multiple objects in Salesforce or or different services completely, not even just Salesforce, you can manage it all within here. I uh, have all of your different connections, you know, and move it all around as part of your ETL or ELT pipeline is just another component to it. There you have it. You've officially seen reverse ETL in action through census. Now, of course, this is a pretty simple example, but as I said earlier, this can be used for 
a variety of other purposes based on all the different connectors that they have.